And uh, Luis was a very good uh, speaker. He, he gave us a very nice talk about this new tool. I will share my experience with a new uh, coin. This is the name of Trellix. And it is coated with um, a polymer foam. It, it is called shape memory polymer foam. And it has fantastic uh, properties that helps us to achieve very good results. So. Um, this is, you see, Anna Berdias is my colleague, and I work in, in Odense University Hospital in Denmark. So, let's start to advance. No, I cannot. Hmm. So, I, I push and it doesn't work. So, I already started to talk, so now I click on... Yes, we lost a little bit time, so you might be a first, okay? If okay. Thank you. So, uh, good morning again. So finally, I am on. Uh, so I, I start to talk about this material that is called shape memory polymer. This is a, a stuff that has two um, states. The one is a primary, which is a print. It means that it is compressed. And the secondary state is it's expanded. And it happens when it is exposed to moisture or elevated temperature. So when, when uh, during the production, the polymer foam, uh, the manufacturing is first getting cool, and then it gets much smaller, it's creamed, and it is necessary to be able to deliver the uh, stuff through a microcatheter, which is a small structure. And then it can get out from the microcatheter and get in touch with heat or moisture. It will uh, expand, and uh, this is a very good property for the embolization of the vessels. So what you see here under is that uh, the properties are, are um, summarized. And the first is that you see high degree of space filling. So the material can swell up to 100 times. You just look at the images here. These are single images with one second between each of them. There is a device put in water that has a temperature of 80 centigrade. After one second, this is the size of the device. Two seconds, three seconds, and four seconds. So you see, it is a very, very strong um, swelling effect up to 100 times. But it is not a rigid stuff. It is not dangerous for the vessel world. So it will conform to the vessel and to the aneurysm or whatever structure you put it. The, ra the radial force is low. You cannot rupture the vessel. Another beautiful property is that the surface area is huge, so it will give enough space for all the platelets to gather on the surface area and it will promote thrombosis. It has excellent biocompatibility and histologic response. It has no uh, reaction with any of the, of the uh, uh, body components. And uh, also you can use for neurovascular or peripheral access. So this is the property itself of the, of the shape memory. So now how it, how it works, it, again a little small repetition. The surface of the blood con contacting area is huge, so all here the platelets can get attached to this area, which is a porous structure. It fills also a lot of space, but not like like uh, uh, hydrogen stuff. It has a lot of holes, small holes inside, which is good for the thrombosis. Sorry. Uh, also, the biocompatibility is very good, smooth delivery, easy, and uh, no vessel trauma. So, how the coil looks like? This is what you can see in the nat native uh, structure, the most distant portion of the coil is bare platinum. It does not have any coating on it. It is just to get inside the aneurysm and start the development. And then this is the crimped shape memory foam on the stuff. And when it gets in contact with the blood, it, it gets 
um, material for the uh, size up 2.5 the size and if you look at this image carefully you can see that this structure is porous so the blood when it contacts the blood it can get inside the stuff and get immediate and, and progressive thrombosis so this is a this is a very nice uh, uh, structure and uh, next slides will you show we show you the uh how the coin is in the uh, uh, when you push out from the microcatheter so the crimp diameter is 0.15 inch when it is expanded it will go to the double and uh, the platinum coin inside it is very very thin it is like a thin wire uh, when you push inside the, the the wire is very soft but the material is a little bit stiffer so it is a little bit stiffer than the ordinary coins the sizing diameter is between 3 to 16 millimeter the length the length, longest coin is 20 millimeter and uh, again the we need an 0.021 microcatheter 10 minutes working time is short we can use it much longer in my practice i used it up to 30, 30 minutes so you can you can pull back the, the, the coil without any problem so uh, next the detachment is electrolytic and uh, the profile like is very variable stiffness it is this is a soft port this is a little bit stiffer and the, the most proximal port is soft again so this is the detachment device it's very easy you push the uh, the, the uh, pusher wire inside until until you hit the wall then you push this button and then it will go uh, continuously and when it's green it's detached. it works very very reliable so let, let me show you the very first case that i started with it was a direct uh, carotid cavernous fistula very very high flow uh, and it's a big uh, portion of the cavernous sinus is filled you see here the the flow you just push in the carotid artery and uh, the uh, venous uh, structures this part of the fistula already filled earlier than the arterial structures in the in the brain so it was a really high flow and i was expecting that it can be difficult to occlude this but this was the first i said it is safer than starting to start with an aneurysm so this was the reason why i started with this and my setup was that i put a neuron max catheter because i need a large diameter i put a balloon it's a copernic 5 by 15 balloon and then i put an O21 microcatheter, which was the Prowler Plus, through the fistula hole inside the cavernous sinus and push the uh, coil. And this is the first coil. You see, it's a 16 by 20. 20 is the longest coil so far. So I took the longest and largest, but this is, it looks like, like just uh, nothing in this huge structure. So I said, we will need a lot of coils here. So I continued and I pushed four coils the same size, 16 by 20. And at that point, since I mentioned you, the coil is a little bit stiffer than the other one. I lost, I lost the uh, position of the microcatheter T, and this is the angiographic image of the four coil. It's a little bit slow, slowing down the flow, the, the flow, but it's still it's very far from being uh, at least slow. And since I could not get back the microcatheter in the structure, I was a little bit unhappy and disappointed. And then I got the idea, and my coworker Annabelle told me, since you have a balloon, why don't you try and inflate the balloon and see what's happen, happening? And this is what I did. So I inflated the balloon and waited 10 minutes. Uh, there was very good collateral flow from the right side, so it was no problem. And after 10 minutes, this was the start. So, in the 10 minutes, the whole 
structure thrombosed, and I waited again an additional 10 minutes to see if this was just a dream, but it was not. So this is the final angiogram. The fistula is fully occluded, and this is a six-month follow-up. And if you see the uh, enlarged views, the lumen of the carotid is beautiful. You see the very, very limited volume of the coil. And what you do, first stuff caused the, the thrombosis, immediate thrombosis of the vessel. So after this case, I became very, very happy and enthusiastic and started to work on other structures. And this was another fistula. I just show you how I approached. This was a patient with the trauma, uh, left-sided, but he developed the fistula on the right side. And uh, my normal approach is to go up uh, with two microcatheters, one to deliver coil and the other one to deliver fluid, uh, usually a squid, to occlude the fistula. And this is what I did. And I pushed, these are the coils, I pushed 22 coils, uh, 20 centimeter long each other. You see still here, it is not densely packed. Uh, and there was still flow after that. And then I, I pushed the squid and I achieved complete occlusion of this fistula. This is the final angiogram. And this is the follow-up at four months. This is good result, but it's nothing special because the, the, the fluid did the job. So there was another fistula. It was a lady with a disturbing tinnitus. And uh, what you see here is that uh, uh, the uh, lateral sinus of the left lateral sinus is already um, uh, distorted. And uh, here I pushed the microcatheters from the same side. I pushed the proral plus and echelon. And since the uh, structure, since the lumen of the sinus was uh, uh, distorted, I pushed some small coils first and filled the whole stuff. And then I started, okay, now I have to push the fluid. And I did the angiogram, and there was no need to push any fluid because the whole sinus was already blocked by the coils, pure coils. And you see again, it's not a dense packing. You can see through the coils, but the result is there. So this thrombose, and this is the follow-up at five months. Beautiful remodeling of the vessel. So now it's time to go over to other pathological conditions. It's a, it's a large basilary tip aneurysm. Uh, you see also the neck is white. The, the uh, longest diameter is almost 17 millimeter. This is above 10. So what to do? It's an easy access for a microcatheter, of course. My strategy was to put a small microcatheter 17 into the left PCA to place a stand later on if necessary, and then put the, um, the prowler, the alternative one, inside the aneurysm. And I pushed the first coil, it was a 12 by 20. You see that the neck was very wide, so the coil went out to the PCA, but I played a little bit and I could deploy this coil. And uh, then I put some more coils all together, 12, 11, 10, 3, 8, and 1, 7. So it's all together seven coils, 20 centimeter long, and there is still quite much inflow into the uh, vessel, but I could not push too much more, and I did not want to push either, because I was, I was thinking it may thrombose the aneurysm. What I did is that I placed the Leo, a 2 by 2.5 by 25, Leo baby, and this is the final result. There is a little bit less inflow, but still a lot. And you would never need such an aneurysm uh, uh, with other coils. And this is the final angiogram. You see all the posterior aspect of the aneurysm is still filling. And this is the follow-up at 12 months. And this is the 
enlarge the image, you see the aneurysm is completely thrombosed. There is a small open portion at the neck, but this just shows how strong the, uh, uh, the effect of the cause is. So it, there was inflow in the uh, aneurysm and we had double antiplatelet uh, regime due to the stent, but the, the, uh, the aneurysm is still thrombosed. So very good results. So now, another case, this aneurysm on the left pericolosal artery, it's a little bit wide neck. It is not very easy to pack this aneurysm tightly enough without any adjunctive device. I said, okay, let's try what to, to see what the coin can do on its own. So I started with a 7 by 20 and I put additionally three coins. Uh, 515 and 2 uh, 3 by 4 and you see here that the, the aneurysm is packed and uh, it is difficult to see if there is totally occluded. There is still some inflow, I think, because other vessels are in the same uh, area projecting over that. This is a final angiogram and this, it seems that the aneurysm is fully occluded. So I was happy. Then I treated the other small one with another coist. This is follow up at 14 months and you see the aneurysm is totally gone. It's beautiful, and the remodeling of the bifurcation is also perfect, without any balloon or stent or whatever. So it's just a coil, four coils. So, a small acorn to demonstrate that this, uh, uh, it's a very wide mechanism, the coils can be mixed with other coils. Because this is a very wide neck aneurysm, to keep it inside the sac, I picked first a, a coil which has a very strong 3D memory. This was a presidio, 4x11, 11.5. This is just to keep it inside the aneurysm. And then I put two small trellix coils, and then I finished with one small uh, two by eight um, galaxy coil again. And this is the final angiogram. You see the aneurysm is still flow inside, especially this portion where the other pericolosal artery gets off from the sac. This is the final angiogram. This is the follow-up at six months. You see that the aneurysm is completely occluded. You cannot see the other pericolosa. So I put the catheter into the other side, the other carotid, and, and the, the angiogram shows that the other pericolosa artery is filling through the other A1. So this uh, packing completely remodeled the, the vessel and the, the bifurcation. So uh, this was also very, very encouraging result. It's a bigger aneurysm, a uh, ruptured one. Let's see what we can do with this course. This aneurysm was treated by the colleague of mine. I was on clutches uh, due to an orthopedic operation. I could not participate, just I was there as a backseat driver. And he put the uh, first coil 9 by 20 very nice and uh, 7, 7 by 20, 7 uh, next coil. And then another one, 4 by 15, and the angiogram showed still significant inflow in the neck area. So I suggested to put one more. And this one more, 3 by 10, it was difficult to place inside the aneurysm. So she had to work back and forth. And during this procedure, the uh, coil uh, prematurely detached inside the catheter. So it was a challenging situation, and my suggestion was to take a wire, a terrible wire, 18, and push out the coil, because we didn't have to retrieve it, but pushing out the coil, it came out to the bifurcation, so it caused uh, thrombosis at the bifurcation, this is the, the pusher wire of the coil that was still inside the uh, uh, catheter, so you see here, the aneurysm was thrombosing, uh, but also in the uh, bifurcation area, both, carotid, both uh, pericolosal arteries uh, had significant coils. So we had to give integralin 
to this of the cord, and then we put uh, the microcatheter to one of the pericardial arteries and place the stand, Leo baby, two by 25. And due to the integral in, half of the energy was also circulating again. But this is this was our best option, what we could do. And uh, then we removed the microcatheters. You can still see here the uh, the pusher wire of the, the, the last coil, which was in the vessel. And um, this is the final angiogram. And this is the six months follow-up. What you can see is the aneurysm is completely occluded. The vessels are very nicely reconstructed by the stent, and there is no the uh, also the uh, uh, remnant of the pusher wire is is kept safe with the stent. This is also we could save this complication. So. A big aneurysm, pecom, right pecom region, a little bit wide necked. Put the uh, catheter in the distal portion of the aneurysm. I put another stent, an accelerator, which can push, can be pushed through a 17 microcatheter, even this large, large size. And after putting the uh, stent, I pack the aneurysm with the coils. Uh, I put three coils, six, six twenty, four ten, and three ten, and there was still open portion in the bottom. So I I had to uh, find another space for the microcatheter. So I used a thermal wire, get deeper, and put one more coil. This was a three by six. It came out a little bit, but the stand was there. It was not an issue. So I finished this, and what you see here is that the aneurysm is still very well circulated, so it's not a good result at all. And the peacock comes from the bottom of the aneurysm. This is the final angiogram, and this is the follow-up at 16 months. The aneurysm is completely occluded, not only the aneurysm, even the, uh, the PCA, which is filling from the uh, vertebral artery. So the result is excellent, again, and it's totally unexpected for me. So, to summarize my experience, <clears throat> I treated altogether 35 aneurysms, seven of them was so the coil is easy to push through an old 21 microcatheter. The smaller coils can be pushed even 017. I tried it, it works. Uh, these are stiffer than other coils on the market, but get softer when it gets into the body. We need more patients with these coils different pushing technique, give it time slowly, and it gives very, very good effect of swelling and instant thrombosis. Thank you very much.